a lot of weapons in Monster Hunter are garbage. And not just in one game, but across the many in the series, with Sunbreak throwing more than just its own hat into the ring. In the case of the Switch Axe, there are several factors outside of the rod and element that determines the weapon's worth, such as sharpness, rampage decoration slot, and the file type. You may often hear which weapon is meta like the Volcanic Switch or the Magma Almadron Switch Axe and why it's meta. On the inverse, a weapon like Ross and Pryon, the Esmonauts Switch Axe, I hope I said that right, would be considered trash. But why would it be considered trash compared to all the other weapons? So my name is Monster Hunter and today I'm going to be talking in detail about why these weapons suck comparing them to their godlike peers. Let's do this. A switch axis file type plays a significant role in the way that you set, build, and perform with a particular weapon. You want to concentrate more on raw with power file and a balance of raw and element with element file. Sometimes you get weapons with good features and an unfortunate file type alongside it. The switch axes I'll cover today are diminished by a combination of reasons with the file type as the primary contribution to their failure. The first switch axe on this list is a weapon that is a victim of its own theme, Sunbreak system mechanics, and the file type of the weapon. That switch axe is the Avidia axe, the Nargakuga switch axe. So let's break it down. The Nargakuga weapon theme consists of low base raw, high base affinity, and high sharpness respective of the current village or hub rank. This is consistent throughout each weapon type with small changes to match that type's mechanics. Due to the high base affinity and sharpness, there's less pressure to focus on sharpness reduction skills or affinity based skills which allows for players to slot in for attack increasing skills. This scheme is usually popular for endgame sets of the base title, so pre-expansion, basically. It falls off once weapons catch up in viability and armor gains more skills and deco slots during G rank as well as monsters increased health and defense. This issue is slightly mitigated in Sunbreak as the augment system allows for previously unusable weapons to have a chance at the spotlight. However, even with the augment system, it still struggles to keep up. Due to it being considered a non-elemental weapon, stats gained from augment levels go straight to attack with a flat bonus of 40. This could be great if it weren't for the fact that the rampage slot is a level 1. There's two issues with this. One, the level 1 rampage decorations are straight dirt. Two, it is expensive to increase as that takes four to seven slots away which could have been used for attack boost. You would want to have it at level two to at least benefit from the anti-species decorations. Trying to get it up to level three costs seven augment slots and that's when the concept of diminishing returns comes in. There's no need for level three as Deora Soul is unnecessary due to the weapon's already high affinity Element exploit doesn't work on poison, and file switch boost on poison file is worthless, as the only benefit would come from the gauge recovery. Yes, poison file would have a chance to proc on morph attacks, but the fill rate for poison file will see that file bursts take care of the rest. Best to just stay at level 2 rampage decoration slot. On the topic of poison file, even if all the aforementioned stuff got fixed, it still has difficulties as the poison file just nullifies any good that could come from it. If it were like its direct competitors, Zariela's Phantasm, Thanatos Serpent, and Mizara's Asterism, the Camellios, Remobra, and Lucent Nargakuga switch axes respectively, it could have stood a chance. These weapons have higher base raw, above average white or purple sharpness, good decoration slots, and rampage decoration slots that don't take too much away from the weapon if or when upgraded. The rampage slots make it more appealing as file switch boost has a definitive benefit when attached to power file. Fun fact, in world, the Nargakuga switch axe was actually power file. To recap, the sharpness and base affinity are not enough to make up for the level 1 rampage decoration slot and poison file due to how expensive augment slotting for rampage slot upgrade would be and how sword mode attacks are operating off of their base damage as poison file adds nothing but the chance to apply status. One could argue that the build up boost and status trigger combo could help with damage and while that is true, you have to remember that its direct competition is also capable of using that set and benefiting from a better file type among other things. Every single Switch Axe player got done mad dirty when they figured out what the final boss weapon was. With high base raw, extreme purple sharpness, low element, negative crit, level 3 rampage slot, and element file. 
every other weapon type looked fantastic. You might as well have punched me in the face and I would have felt better than seeing this. Why? <laughs> like, why would you do this? Yes, every weapon has its drawbacks. It has the aforementioned benefits at the cost of its affinity and its elemental value. But while this weapon was down, they kicked it with Element File. To elaborate, Element File gives an additional 45% or a times 1.45 boost to elemental values while in sword mode. 15 times 45 is 21.75, round it down to 21. Does that sound like much of a benefit to you? Then you max out Dragon Attack and you look even dumber. If it had been Power File instead, it would have definitely been a crazy weapon during base release and could have been a Dragon version of the Amatsu Axe at the final title update. Switch X element files do not benefit from full element focus like Dual Blades or Charge Blade does. Switch X attacks are mostly physical hits without elemental modifiers, which is why element files succeeds at blending raw and elemental skills. The only attacks that have modifiers on them are elemental burst counter for both the explosion and the two hits after, all finishing discharges, and Soaring Wyvern Blades Explosion. If there were higher modifiers on other non-explosive attacks, it could see a full element focus set. However, we live in a timeline where Hammer, Lance, and even Greatsword have higher elemental modifiers than the Switch Axe. Even with the Abyssal Torrent's fully leveled augment slots, the only real benefit lies in the raw attack, sharpness, and level three rampage slot. There are quite a few Switch Axes that are contradictory to their file type, such as High attack, low element on element file, or high element, low attack on power file. Trying to make that work over a weapon that has its stats correct is grasping at more than just straws, but some of the more viable ways would be combining Dragon Heart with other offensive skills or even going all in on a Blood Awakening set. The final weapon on this list was unfortunately neglected its birthright and then got intentionally gutted for every weapon. And then they sent the Switch Axe version of it to the Gulag single-handedly the greatest tragedy man has ever known. The Baron Defiance, Seregios' Switch Axe. For those of you who don't know, Seregios and Chaotic Gormagala were the first monsters to have special effects attached to their weapon. For Seregios, consecutive evasions will restore sharpness. It was the old school blade scale skill, but just attached to the weapon. In Sunbreak, they either took that away or forgot but gave special effects to Velkana, Flaming Espinas, Amatsu, and the Primal Mouse Trees. It's fine though, right? It's, it's inconsequential to the end point. Wrong. Take a look at this. <laughs> Every rendition of this weapon in fourth generation was power file. So what prompted them to make it dragon file? Dragon file is a product of its time where early to mid game dragon element wasn't present on weapons or had to be unlocked through free element for the switch axe. There's more dragon options than ever before and the file type doesn't stand so well in a game where sword mode is the primary mode of the weapon with switch axes damage being translated to morphing out of sword mode. There's no reason to continue dragon file as a feature unless they intend to buff it or stop having the weapons be so lackluster. Now back to Seregios, look at the stats on this thing. Base raw is above average, the purple sharpness, low base affinity, somehow a deco slot, and a level two rampage slot. Tell me this weapon wouldn't cook at max augment slots with level eight attack boost. Yes, it does exist in a title where element is the preferred damage type, but that doesn't mean it had to be less powerful than the starting weapon tree. So how do we fix this? Well, you know, I, I hate to be that guy, but there's nothing we can do. Yeah, the weapon can have dragon hard and everything under the sun, but the damage is so particular, it'll only have an effect on monsters weak to dragon as you're relying on sword mode's base damage mid combo before allowing morph attacks to take over. And if you didn't know, dragon file is just base sword mode damage with dragon elements applied on top of it. So if you're fighting a monster, who has an elemental hit zone value of zero dragon, you're just doing the sword mode's natural damage. Long story short, switch axe file types play a hefty role in how strong a weapon is, and sometimes the type chosen for a weapon can nullify the stats that could have given it potential. 
I have more coming down the pipeline, and as for those sets that I showed for each weapon, I'll be releasing videos for those separately to get the full grasp and not to have taken away from what I was saying in this one. Anyway, if you enjoyed what I showed here, comment down below what non-meta switch acts you want to see me talk about. Thanks for watching, and until next time.